Hey guys, here we are with the ESM uh, ME109E model. Uh, this plane's been out a good long while. Um, I currently do not have a cockpit kit for it. I figured I'd go ahead and um, see about working up a cockpit for it. Um, anyway, it's a good looking airplane. It's been well proven, flies really well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the plane set up. It's just the uh, basic fuselage here. Uh, it looks like we are gonna have to remove some of the formers inside to get the cockpit in so i'm gonna go ahead and um, get this prepared to cut and um, see where we need to go move along to um, get this cockpit installed okay here we are back with the fuselage i've actually got the cockpit totally installed i'm gonna come back and show you what i have cut out um, the way i first did it was um, i marked down both sides here um, in one eighth of an inch. I used the tape that um, that I get. It's a 3M tape. Um, I just come in one eighth inch. It's actually just a tad over an eighth. It's not quite three sixteenths. Anyway, do that all the way down both sides. And then I come from the where it makes the 90 degree here back six inches. All right, and I draw a line straight across. I do that on both sides. All right, up here, and then I put a piece of tape across the back. I just. Uh, I just lay a piece of tape across that back line and from wherever this uh, uh, eighth inch tape falls I'll show you real quick I got the eighth inch tape and like I said this is this is closer to three sixteenths but because um, I cut it just a tad wide but anyway once I got those two tapes on there I measure up one half inch make a mark measure in one half inch make a mark and it gives me my diagonal on the back side okay once I did that, I got that all marked out. I cut the area out that I had marked, okay? And then I come across here and I cut up the dash. I removed the dash and left just a little bit less than an eighth inch. Um, well, it's right at an eighth inch all the way around, okay? You got to leave that for a little bit of strength. Your canopy hooks on or, or glues on right here. So you got to leave just a little bit of that, okay? Once I got to remove that, um, I ended up having to take out just a little bit of the former. You can see here that I've left most of it I just cut out. You can see the two circles here. If you look, measure from where this former touched, this former right here used to be in there. And from where it touched in was one inch. Okay, so I, I have come in there and I've, I cut the former here on both sides and popped it out and then cut this former out um, one inch in, inward. Okay, now this side frame piece I've left in place and it's about, I left about one half inch of it and it tapers off to zero where the fuselage starts tapering around. Okay, so you can see in here, yeah, you can see in here how it comes up. It remains about a half inch until the top and it tapers in. Okay, you still got plenty of strength there. We're going to end up adding the cockpit and then some braces underneath so you'll still strengthen up this area pretty good. All right. Once I got that cut out, um, I then went ahead and worked on installation of the cockpit. Um, when you get the cockpit, it will be like all my others are. It'll be one piece. Okay. Now you can see what I've how I've done this. You, it'll be on a big uh, piece of plastic and it'll be flat. Okay. And what we have to do is come in here and we remove all the flashing down to where it's the 90 degrees, and then we're gonna come up here at the top and starting right here at the at the curvature and we're going to start tapering that down to zero and we're going to do all four sides that way we're going to taper it from right there where it starts to curve we're going to kind of taper it down to where it comes up and meets here at zero all right once you've got that cut out now here's the finished product and you can see how i've come in here and just start tapering it up and you can leave as much as you want what you do is you start trial fitting it and just cut off as much as you as you need all right anyway once we got that cut out up to zero we're going to leave this is about a half inch wide plastic here and we're going to cut this off and we're going to cut that till it's about a quarter inch wide all the way across okay so you're going to leave it a quarter inch wide it comes down all the way across all right on the front half, we're gonna come back and even with this side, we're gonna cut back three quarters of an inch. See, I got it marked here, three quarters, all right? Then on the backs, from the back side forward, 
we're cutting one and three sixteenths inches. Let's pull. All right, and we're gonna do that one three sixteenths on both sides of the rear and three quarters on both sides at the front. Okay, now what you need to do then is we take our pliers or we take, I got that big uh, three inch wide crimp and I just fold this up. All right, then once you've got that done, this is the easiest thing to do is we're gonna trial fit everything. You can always cut less and then cut cut more as you need later. Just wanna make sure it fits. But all this does is come up through the bottom and it just hooks right on, right on this lip, okay? It locks right into place, all right? Now I did, I cut mine a little bit shorter and I ended up removing the sides here to allow, you know, I ended up having to cut it a little bit more off, but that's what gave me the inch and three sixteenths. This cockpit actually goes back in here about this far. Okay, now if you want, you can leave these, instead of putting the diagonal on, you can leave them square, just cut across and square it off. Um, but anyway, that's the easy part there. Um, the dash, let me get it apart. The dash comes in two pieces. Let me get this tape off. There is a, um, an upper and a lower dash. And what we're gonna do is we'll take, I'll tell you what, let me grab some parts and I'll show you what the, the new parts look like on the flashing and then we can cut them out and show you from there. I'll be right back. Okay, here we are with the uh, parts to the dash. You can see these are, are still in the plastic. Um, or still got the side, all the flashing around it. What we're going to do is we're going to cut this off um, and leave as much as we can all the way around. It's a quarter inch wide, so we're just going to barely cut this off to where we've got all the flashing off all the way around. We're going to do that to both of them. And then what you're going to do is I take um, 332nd balsa and I lay this on top of it and I trace it out. And then I cut that balsa and fit it to where it fits exactly inside this, okay? And then we just take CA glue and glue, and glue that in. And you can see I have a finished one here that um, I have this, have this piece of balsa glued in. Now we also want to do that to the bottom piece too. What this does, it makes it a little bit more rigid and handle, up, handle um, heat and stuff over time. Anyway, we're going to do that to both. And what you end up with is a top and a bottom. And the reason I made it in two pieces because this was offset. The back piece uh, actually went in just a, t just a little bit. And it kind of makes it easier to pull and install. But anyway, what you want to do is once you've got those two pieces all cut out, uh, you want to go ahead and clean this off and just li you know you clean all the excess off all the way around to where it's flush with the balsa itself. Okay, then now this is an early one. doesn't have the other parts on it. But... Um, what you want to do then is once you've got that together, you can take this and um, you've got one or two ways to do it. You can take this and install it in the plane. All right, you can install it first and then come back in here and um, glue this onto the back. Or I trial fit everything and you can tape, take a piece of tape and just fold it over and tape this onto the front and test fit everything, make sure it fits in, okay? Um, now, I got the finished product here. You can see that it is just glued onto the front, okay? And um, this also, I've actually got the, um, the gun sight in there too. But um, uh, this got a couple extra pieces on it and also um, some uh, a pins for, um, for uh, levers, anyway. But um, you can see that I've got the, uh, 332nd in here, and this one's sanded flush. The 332nd, I've left this one just a tad wider because it does not matter on the, once you've got it, because this has to be flush to get this piece on. But anyway, once this is in place, you won't, don't want to glue anything until everything's trial fit. The, the dash itself just comes up from the bottom and it's pulled up into place and it will slide right in. Now, if you let go of it, it'll slip down so you just need to trial fit it, make sure everything fits up, and it there's a little slot right, right behind this lip that that'll slide into, okay? And um, it just slides right into place. All right, the next thing we move to is the um, 
the seat when you get the seat the seat looks just like this here this seat you can see that it this is the one that's made for the, that i did for the kit itself you can see how much taller this is and what i've done it, you, what you need to do is when, as you're cutting it out you see the sides see where the sides come down you need to go ahead and cut it out full size then set this down in there because this sets flush onto the floor the I actually cut it about an eighth inch high because you want you can always remove it later but I cut a little just a tad high so this will go in place all right once you've done that the next thing we have is the armor plating um, I did some research online I was trying to find this particular model I couldn't find out which exactly one it was to see what kind of headrest it had in but from the E3 to the E4, you either, ha either had no armored headrest, some of them just had a single headrest, and then some of them had the uh, extra armor plate that went up top, okay? So the way we make this is we come in here and um, we cut this out, leaving as much as we can. This is one quarter inch. Once we get that done, we take it and we place it on a piece of uh, eighth inch balsa, trace around it, cut it out, and glue it on the inside. Then there'll be enough plastic inside that you can glue this whole thing down onto that piece of plastic. You can leave a lip all the way around. Then you come back and you can trim it. I've trimmed this one all the way around and sand it and fill it if you, if you have any gaps or anything right there at the back. Okay, now I've just taped this plate on here. All right, one other thing you may wanna do is if you're using a gas motor, uh, glow motor, you're gonna have some vibration. If you take this and just glued it right on the top, it could come loose. Now what I've done is I took this and I drilled a hole right in the center. You can do like two of them across or one in the center, however. But I take it, took it and laid it back here and marked that where that hole is. And I drilled a hole into the back piece here. Now you may want to reinforce that on the inside with like a, a quarter by a half inch piece of balsa all the way across. But what this does, this allows me to install that. You got the sharp point of the toothpick and it just comes down and slides right into place. All right, and that's gonna make it, even though I glue it there, it's gonna make it nice and rigid so it doesn't vibrate off or break. All right, you've got, once you, you we'll also have a headrest in there um, some of them were painted like a black leather or a brown leather. That'll be in there. I filled it with, uh, uh, I think it was 332nd balsa, and then sanded it flush, and it glues right onto the face of this. Then you have a, um, an angled piece. Um, according to which one you, you, which model you did, or that some of the armor plates were a 90 degrees, and some of them were rounded. I just went ahead and included this as a 90 degree. But it came in here and it uh, would glue onto the back. But you need to test fit this to make sure that whatever height you have here will fit inside the canopy. I did not, I did not cut this canopy, because um, I, like I said, I'm not gonna end up keeping the plane, so I didn't wanna pre-cut it. But um, you wanna make sure everything you do here fits inside. From here up on the canopy is three inches, so you need to keep this under three inches. And, uh, but anyway, that, that's installed there. Um, a couple more things you need to do is once you get all this trial fitted and you glue it in, there'll be enough plastic to seal off the back. That means you'll be able to pull the back up. Well, it'll be already pulled up, but mark it and install a piece of plastic on the back here to keep make it a nice rigid box. You'll also be able to put a piece on the front and that will make it more rigid. Um, you also, once you get this installed, I would come across the, um, across the bottom here and you could take a piece of um, eighth inch balsa by half, by however long it is, and install it across the bottom and glue this to it to make it rigid so it doesn't um, get caught up in vibration. Um, another thing you're going to have to do is you will have to move your servos for your um, elevator. You can either, um, there is enough room to make you another uh, a plate right here, it'd be close to the bottom, and run your elevator servos here, or you can move them up here, and there's plenty of room in here, and run the, the control lines to the back from, 
from that location. But if you're gonna do, I figured if we're gonna do a copy it, we might as well make it large enough that we can get everything in. Um, you can sit a six scale pilot flat in there and he will fit inside the canopy. All right, I wanna show you a couple things we're gonna, that we put on the cockpit kit itself. We have a, um, a gun sight. When you get to gun sight, it will look like this. You do have to add a quarter. I used a piece of quarter inch um, aircraft ply that I glued onto the front of this. And the reason you have to do this is because I've used this gun sight on several planes, but with this lip here, um, we had to extend it out a little bit. But anyway, you get to gun sight, there will be clear plastic in there to make your, um, your lenses with, okay? Um, there will be some uh, pins in there to make your levers with. You have a, uh, all your uh, gauges are, are, are in the kit itself. Um, if y'all watch my video on how to paint a cockpit kit, I show you how to cut those out where they're nice and round. It's really easy to do. Um, on the main body of the cockpit itself, we have several pieces. Um, we have the, um, the flap wheels. Uh, I think one of those for flat, one for elevator. Anyway, those will come separate. You need to clean these up. You can cut this, clean this up with an X-Acto knife, cut all the flashing off, round the backs of them. You can see I've cleaned them up and rounded them off. Um, there will be a piece of uh, wood, in, include this eighth inch um, dowel. And what I had to do is uh, drill this out in the center. And also there's a little mark there. If you'll uh, drill it out there, you need to face these back to back and on that dowel. There is enough room for it to go between the seat. You can see the finished product here. Um, there's also uh, an oxygen, the oxygen supply uh, apparatus here. There is a knob included you have to drill and um, glue onto the um, this tab here. And you can even put a hose off this side was actually his the oxygen, but that glues right to the side there, okay? There's a, um, I forgot online what, what, or I got some documentation. I forgot what this was for, but this is a two piece uh, piece here. It's got a handle and then also this is glued to the side. Um, you just uh, take this, paint it up, take this, paint it up and glue that into the center. That gives you your handle, okay? So that goes right here in the center. All right, there will also be some small knobs to be put on, on uh, these two pieces here. Um, you can actually, one of them had an elevated knob, I just hadn't put it in yet. You can use a pin for that. Now, up along the top here, you can see there are dimples all across here. Um, those were push buttons. And in the past, you've seen on some of my copy kits, I used um, toothpicks to make toggles. Well, I'm using toothpicks on these two but what I do is I, I take and I really, I, I actually cut them and I, I put them in a, a drill and, and take sandpaper and just round the whole end of them to make them nice and thick. All right, and then I take appropriate side drill bit. I'm not sure which one it is, but you can test it out on another piece of plastic and push the, paint them first and then push those through and that gives you your push buttons. Okay, um, another thing you may want to do, this was a document holder um, I just painted it black across here, but it kind of shines and it looks like it's, it's just, uh, it looks shiny. You really can't tell what it is. You could actually put a piece of plastic on the back here and actually cut that out if you wanted and make it look open. And you could actually stick your maps or anything in there that you would want to. Um, on this side over here, there is a small uh, 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 switch that will be included. You put on the bottom and then this is a, a 3 16 inch dowel uh, cut to a, just a little bit, just right at a half inch, and then a piece of brass rod that is put in there and bent. This was really close to the wall, so you, you have to take your time and, and drill your hole and put that wherever you want, okay? Um, the only thing left is the joystick. Um, I'm not sure if I'll cut these off, pre-cut them off for you or not, but those are cut. Um, let's see if I can see the original one. Um, you can see the one I painted up here, I've cut it down pretty far. And you can cut that to whatever height you want and um, paint it up. Now all the resin parts you need to clean, you need to wash with nice soap and water 
and get them nice and clean before you paint them at all. All these can be sanded and um, like that, you can cut that off and then just sand it till it's nice and smooth across the back. You can, you can see how this one uh, sanded up really nicely. Um, but any of these parts can be cut and sanded. Um, I usually prime them first with a, um, I got several different uh, plastic coat primer, whatever, and um, then I paint them with using acrylic paints and it works pretty well. Um, I'm gonna get this all back together and see if I, uh, I have missed anything and, and then we'll try to finish up with this cockpit. Okay guys, here we are with it all back together. I'll give you a quick look of it. Um, you can see um, the joystick, you just put it where um, right there in the middle. The um, seat you're gonna glue directly to the base of the uh, cockpit itself. Um, the dash, you just need to make sure that you get it nice and square in there when you glue it in place. And like I said, you can seal the front and the back of the cockpit with the spare uh, plastic that will be um, provided. Um, one other thing you may want to do, and I, I kind of suggest it when, when I'm talking about um, adding some extra strength across there and going across the bottom of the, the cockpit itself to secure it to the sides to stop vibration. Another thing, if you're going to put a pilot in here or just to add strength, uh, take a piece of the 332nd balsa or the eighth inch and, and glue a piece that comes across here. It doesn't have to be, but about an inch wide. And do one in the front and one in the back, and that'll make it nice and rigid so that it doesn't bow in the middle, especially if you're going to put the weight of a pilot on there. Uh, a lot of guys will take those six scale pilots if you can still find them. Um, this is the one I have. This is Eric Cartman. Um, and take the, take the body out and, and and stuff it with uh, filler. Um, but um, like I said, he will uh, fit all the way down in there. Um, uh, doesn't pop the. But once you, but you can get his. But once you get past his boots, he will fit all the way down in there and sit in place and fit with inside the canopy itself. Uh, so that's a good addition. Also, um, I did not include rudder pedals with this because we're keep trying not to cut any more away of the formers up here. Um, his feet would stick way past it. The rudder pedals were behind the the dash, and we are cutting this off right behind the dash. So anyway, um, this cockpit makes a real nice addition to your ESM uh, ME109E. Uh, it'll be available through um, VQ Warbirds. Um, it, it's produced by Ties Planes. Uh, you, my number's on my website at tiesplanes.com. If you ever have any questions, you feel free to call me and I'll talk you through something. Um, also, you, like I said, you might want to go back and look at my, uh, the video on painting cockpits. Um, that, that helps out with um, putting it together and what to, glues to use, what paints to use. Uh, just for just to let you know, um, I use a on this one for the German Warbirds. I kind of like the RLM 74 paint. Uh, that's it, the, the real plane had a little bit of a darker color, but um, I just really prefer this color gray because you can still still see some of the detail um, even with the canopy on. Uh, like I said, it's a Model Masters paint. It's uh, 2084 is the number on it. It's what it looks like, 2084. But anyway, like I said, this plane, this makes a good addition to your plane. Hope you enjoy the, uh, the cockpit kit. It goes together really fast. You can get this thing together in uh, about two hours. It takes longer to paint it than it does to just to assemble it. So anyway, uh, well, good luck with it, and this is the end.